Hello, hello. I hope everybody is ready for our big Wednesday reveal. Yes. It's been an exciting and long week. I know. <laughs> yes, hello. So let me tell you who we have here first, and then we'll get things started. Now, I have, we have Dawn over here, and she was the captain for this week. Below her is Shelly Murphy and the family tree girl, and she was the one whose branches we worked on. And of course, below me is Roberta Estes, and we are going to be tackling her branches this week. So it's going to be an exciting one. So before we start out with all of that, I'm going to say a little bit about Wikitree, just in case you don't know who we are or why we're here. Now, Wikitree is a community of genealogists who are working together on a single family tree. In other words, we all collaborate to grow an accurate global tree, and it's free. We're in the middle of the Wikitree Challenge right now, which is our annual challenge that goes with our year of accuracy. So each week we take a genealogist guest stars tree and we try and fill it out and make it more complete and more accurate than it is anywhere else. Our goal is to improve the accuracy of, of Wikitree, to add more family connections and to make more friends, which we've certainly done. Now, once again, Donna was um, Shelly's captain this week. So we're gonna go ahead and let her tell you a little bit about what we found. Okay, well, you did give us some challenges this week, of course, which oh. we knew going into this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so the first line we have is Michael Murphy, William Michael Murphy's line. And unfortunately, he is still a mystery. After countless hours of scouring records, we are not any closer to knowing when or how he died. We do know that his wife, Nellie, married a minor after he died, and her sister also married a minor. So there's a good chance that he died in a mining camp or an incident, but no solid proof has been found. And we did have members going through quite a few mining things looking for anything they yes. could find. Nellie McCorkle Murphy, your second great grandfather, John McCorkle, appears to have taken the surname of a local pastor, Francis McCorkle, who was yes. known for taking in homeless black children. Francis's great grandson is Tennessee Williams, the famous playwright of many stage music classics. So that was an interesting little tidbit, not a relation, but a right. association. So uh, Harriet Russell Curitan's line. In 1895, two high, high, ugh, excuse me. We didn't break any walls on this line, but we did, however, think that Anderson Russell deserved a little mention here because in 1895, two highwaymen were being chased by the sheriff and his deputies. When they ran into Russell's house, he bravely tried to lock them in. After waving their guns at him, he was forced to set them free. They were captured shortly after, but not before shooting off about 18 rounds at the lawmen. Oh. He was in his oh he was in his 70s at this time. I know, and it was interesting so because oh, you know, I've never heard this story. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, it, you know, it's always fun to get that little bit of personalization that you can and those brief stories that you can find. But apparently these guys ran through like several people's houses. They stopped to start a game of craps. Those people ran them off, you know. Oh, my and then, goodness. I know. And then here they wind up in 70 year old, you know, Anderson's Anderson. home. And he's trying to be brave. He's like, you're not going anywhere. The sheriff's on his way. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So then we great the, yeah, I hear a Harvey Warden's line. And on this line, sometimes we have to trim the information so that it leads away for the correct Brickwell ancestor later on. In this case, it was proven that William Green could not have been the son of John and Mary Warren Green, as they were living in Massachusetts and William was born in Connecticut. So hopefully this is allowing other research to find the correct parents for these guys. And I do have to say, Shelly, that, you know, um, every once in a while we have these trees where we have to trim a lot on and we always feel so bad. But, you know, as a genealogist, that sometimes that's what you need to do, you know, to break open the, the path to finding what else um, should be there. And so you, ha you have some very dedicated people that ask me to tell you that they will still be working on this, this upcoming well, week on some of it. Yeah, it's interesting. I've never heard a green surname connected with the wardens at all. Anyway. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that that's 
Where so did that, that even come in? I'll have to look at that. You'll have to look. So that may have been trimming on our part, you know, because part of this process. Yeah, is there's no sure greens that... in those lines. It must have I been farther Bob, back in the Bob Simons is listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we did have some existing lines on WikiTree. And of course, um, you know, your people were added to WikiTree so long ago, there were other people that came along and added. And, you know, one of our things we did was went generation by generation, person by person, to make sure that everything's fully sourced and accurate. And we had people with different skill sets and, you know, different sure. viewpoints looking at these. So um, that's where some of that trimming came in. And I have to admit that I was just guilty a little bit of teasing them about the chainsaw this morning. I saw that. Out, but, yeah. but, um, but all in good fun you know they they all worked really really super hard to find oh, what they yeah. did this week so yes so, so it sounds like we added that branch on and then took it back off before you even you even knew it was there so. <laughs> um, see how good we are <laughs> yes. you're awesome <laughs> <laughs> also on the warden line we have uh lydia and this goes way back in the 1600s lydia was the first wife of a puritan migrant deacon thomas marshall and she died very young, only five years into their marriage. And so okay. this line, which is new to you, had yes. parents Percival Ingram and Elizabeth Ray Ingram, who both died before the daughter even. So this added three new direct ancestors to that line. Wonderful. And that's on the Marshall line. Correct. Of the Warden line. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Arnold mm -hmm. Warden married Abigail Marshall. And that's the first Marshall coming in. Yes. Right. And I think that's a couple generations back from Abigail yet. So. Oh, yeah. And then had they somebody had found a little tidbit about the Atahualpa Warden, your great grand uncle. Did you know anything about that one? They were saying that um, he was charged with assault. Him and a What's group his of men. Name? I'm probably not saying it right. So, Atahualpa. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I didn't know he got us, but Ada is close enough. Ada is close yeah, enough. I, they referenced <laughs> him as Ada. Yeah, that's Ahira's brother. Oh, okay. Yes. Right. And he was living in Washington at the time this happened. Yes. Yes. And he got arrested? Yeah, they said mm -hmm. that he, the other men he was with, two of them actually were charged with murder. He was not. Oh, so, God. so obviously he was not, you know, he was maybe just hanging out with a bad crowd. He wasn't the one doing anything really bad. <laughs> okay. um, but, you know, that happens. Yeah. You know, yeah. They, they have to be notable or naughty or they don't, you know, we don't hear about them sometimes. So, <laughs> excuse me. So, still on the warden line, we added, mm -hmm. um, some extra generations on the leper line. So we have Jacob Leper, who is now your fifth great grandfather, was a revolutionary patriot. He was born in New York and Reacher sh showed him to be the son of Conrad Leper and Margaretha of unknown name yet. And like his son, he was born in Stone Arabia, New York. And we only have three children identified of them that we could find sources for. But this is and I'm his- I'm gonna file on him. To DAI. Yeah, I didn't have nobody has filed on him yet. Yeah, so you would be the first it. one under him. Yeah, so I checked sons patriot. and daughters, and he's not. He's he's rec He's not. No one's filed under him yet. So and that's oh, his wonderful. death record there. So great. Let's see. Turn um, on here. Okay, Mary Wilton Marshall. On, also on the warden line. Hang on, I'm trying to catch up my other slides here too. Yeah, I think okay. there were just a lot of expansions on the, there, the wardens, which you already had a lot of the work done um, on that those sections too. But you know, they our people just tried to kind of weave in and out of what you already had. Mm -hmm. Right. And so on this line, we added um, her parents weren't on your tree, and her birth record hasn't been found. But she and her son Samuel are both listed on her father's probate record oh great so David yeah and that was and a wife Catherine that was quite a fine because nothing yeah. was coming up of course for her and so you know our team members started looking at probate in the area for the right mm -hmm. surname and yeah mm -hmm. not only did the dad list her but he listed one of her sons you know wow. and it left yeah and it left that's uh, awesome property to Samuel so that was a mm -hmm. really exciting find Yep. And that added seven new direct ancestors on. Right, right. Oh, I love it. 
<laughs> so here we're on still in the warden line and we're on Elizabeth Boyer warden and we've got Sarah Missilis. Missilis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was your third great grandfather already was on your primary tree, but her parents were listed as us. Uh, Hasus, Has and <laughs> she always says beats me. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> He's aha. <laughs> but the, uh, that the, his parents are, her parents are actually proven to be Suris Marcellus and Anna Maria because the original Asuris is close, but the man that he had a daughter named Sarah. And Sarah married a man named William Lightfoot. Mm -hmm. So they're two different people. So you'll have to what check out chances, that profile. Yeah. 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 And there's Such more than one Asuras, too, all in the right. same time frame. And it was like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, which one? Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't think that'd be that common, but <laughs> no. Back I then, think I guess it was. Dutch, uh, if I, is that Dutch or something? That last name? I'm not really sure on that, um, yeah. what their origination is. Yeah. Because you really had some diverse ancestors off, off of that line. Yeah. Yeah. And here it's just talking about, um, you know, with those corrections made to, of course, Sarah's line, that added mm -hmm. 20 new direct ancestors. Wow. So that gives you all kinds of new people to look at, Shelly. <laughs> and... Yeah, we even, we had our German expert, Dieter, looked mm -hmm. really hard at the German lines that are on there. Now, there are a couple of people mm -hmm. stretched out further in the branches that were there. Somebody had connected them. Um, he couldn't find records to fully support what they had attached, but mm -hmm. he did put records for what he did find. And so, um, but that's, yeah. And they're showing up in the DNA, which is interesting. Now I can attach you know, look back because it's like, okay, who, who, where? <laughs> where <laughs> so they're, they're showing up. So that's an excellent. <laughs> yeah. Cause that will help to figure out what, who that is, or at least where they're coming. Right. From. Yeah. So. And then on the Henry David, Alan Davis line, we're finally getting off the wardens there. And <laughs> <laughs> into the goings, the goings, yeah. the goings. Shall your fourth great grandfather lived in Loudon, Loudon County by Loudon. 1810. Loudon, okay. Uh -huh. And by 1820, he and his family of five children and wife had moved to Jefferson County. His mm -hmm. son Lawson was 48 in 1850 and was a documented boatman, which I think we saw the, the newspaper article for him showing that he ran a ferry. So that made sense. Um, he was still a boatman in 1860. Um, we tried to find a connection to a Thomas Goins. Who had purchased land from Jackson Newman, but we were unable to find the connection there. But mm -hmm. it is said that the family of Goins are all a free family of black men and boatmen were responsible for helping many slaves escape in Jefferson County. And a Mr. Joseph Coyle noted that 589 persons were in Jefferson County in 1860, all being escaped slaves. Enslaved persons escaping in those large numbers is said to have been very unique to Jefferson County. And that's yeah. just crazy that they were able to get that many people out, you know, where that ferry was. And I don't know if you guys know anything about Jefferson County, Virginia, but it's now Jefferson County, West Virginia. And that's right. where Harper's Ferry's at. And that's where John Brown, the whole revolt and all that stuff happened. The attempt on the arsenal. And everything is as it was. Wow. When you go up to research, you're going in the courthouse and everything is, except they added, you know, bathrooms and electricity. <laughs> Other than that, everything is still in the mode it was wow. back in the 1860s. It's fascinating up there. But, and, and uh, we've been trying to figure out, there's another researcher up there because that Lawson, he was the boatman, and from some of the things, there's two people that um, reported that they escaped by the help of a boatman, only two, and um, they basically were under the boat when they crossed the river. That's oh, how wow. they got to the other side. So it's kind of a fascinating story. I'd love to do some research and write that up because, you know, just not knowing that and then what you are saying here and the 500 and some folks that either ran away or sold or died or whatever it was, you know, um, there was actually another thing done by American university on this. 
um, a Civil War scholars guy that talked about this. So this is fascinating. I love it. Yeah. And that Joseph Coyle, I mean, they're saying there could have been more too, because yeah. um, he didn't even start marking it down at first. And it was like, he all of a sudden became aware. Oh my goodness. There's all these slaves that escaped. So he started yeah. marking them as escaped, 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 <laughs> you know, but he had already started doing his census roles um, before, you know, they said he was like 11 pages in before he even started marking them down. And, and the Goins is a very much a free line and the Goins line actually just to intrigue the researchers, those lines go to 16, 19 and the 20 odd Africans that came in. That's the Goins line is coming from there. Wow. So you ever want to go deeper, call me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. Been working on that for 30 years. So, but yeah, yeah. this is amazing. Always that makes me want to go find. jump in there and go do something about all those that left. We can find them. And now we get to Clara Marsh's line. And although mm -hmm. we did not make headway on the Marsh line, there was tons of hours spent pouring over records. And we have this quote from a team member that they made, she made for you. And it said, this was another week where I've learned much trying to put a little context around a period that Sarah Hart was born into and lived through. Apparently, Virginia was the place to be if you were a freed person of color. And there and was a lot of... Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll have to check out the heart because there's a lot of research notes. We didn't break through on that, but there was a lot of... Uh, Notes Sarah Hart's in, a mystery. Yes, and a lot and of people added a lot more notes for you to look Sarah at. So. And I believe, I don't know who Sarah Hart's parents are, but um, I believe she's white and married a Goins who are mulatto people. And um, I've got too many choices basically to say, who's your father? You, right. you know, there's just yeah. too many. And uh, DNA is the only thing I can maybe connect it with, you know. Well, and one of our members did find a line from some of the hearts that were had lived in the household with them uh, through yeah. a Benjamin heart. And she said, yes. if you could find DNA that met someone that took DNA from that line, hopefully that yeah. would help because there are parents on some of those. But it, it's hard to connect them without the DNA. There's some hearts still up in the Jefferson County. Yeah. Nice. Fascinating. Then we get to the military. We found That's some that you know, and hopefully some you didn't. We have, uh, we found in the Civil War, we have your great grandfather, Harry Warden, served in the mm -hmm. Mission Infantry. And then we have Anderson Russell, who served with that the That one I did US not Army know. Infantry. Did so not know about Anderson. That's awesome. So, yeah. And then if, in the next would be the French Indian War which was in the 1750s and 1760s. Mm -hmm. And this was both your warden line. The father and the son served in the same company. And they're, they're related to you on two lines. So that's why it says fifth and sixth, the great grandfather and fourth and fifth, because they're related to you on more than one line. And you know how that is, is because I uh, hear his wife is Elizabeth. Right. And her mother-in-law is actually her first cousin. So, right. Yep. It's a generation off, but they're all right. Yeah. The same ones. So, so and then is, also, okay. yep. And then uh, Johan, jo, John or Johannes, he served in the Revolutionary War as well, which I think mm -hmm. that's the one you were under. In yeah, the, I went under DAR with him, and they changed his name to John. Yeah, yeah. it's 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 been seen both ways, but yeah. yeah. And then we added the great. The, it just says okay. grandfather Jacob Lepper, but we missed the greats on there. But that is also he died in the Battle of Oriskany while you. Boyer survived the Battle of Oriskany. Correct. Correct. So that's interesting that you had one in each. Awesome. I can't wait to tell mom about Anderson Russell. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to have her come sit in, but she's up talking to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and then one of the things we find sometimes is interesting stories in areas where your family lived. They aren't mm -hmm. necessarily about your family. Then this one we found in Antrim Township, Pennsylvania, which was mm -hmm. where William Davis and Mildred Brand had hailed from. The first house that 
um, Jack Wolgamont built in Siglersburg. He was a, supposedly a reckless and rollicking fellow that was often searched out by the constables. So he had intentionally built half of his house in Maryland and the other half in Pennsylvania. What? Or so, mm -hmm. or so he thought. So <laughs> then when the law would come a calling, he would go to the other side of the house. So if the Pennsylvania <laughs> law came, he'd go to the Maryland side of the house and say, I'm sorry, I'm not in your state. You can't get me. Bye-bye. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Ironically, it turned out later that he had miscalculated the state line. Uh -oh. Everything but his chimney was in Maryland. So only his chimney was in Pennsylvania. But oh that wasn't God. discovered until years later. They never were able to use that. So <laughs> oh I'd never that's heard great, that. Though. I know that's killer. That's funny. Green Castles and Franklin County, which Chambersburg is there, and a lot of battles there. And I'm sitting mm -hmm. here thinking, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you did what? <laughs> that's funny. Yep. Now we're giving people ideas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do what he did. No. <laughs> That's a do not do this at home moment. Oh, my God. Any, anytime you think of a new idea, just look back. Someone else has already thought of it. So. <laughs> this is wonderful. I love it. <laughs> yeah, and that area was interesting anyways. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I'm sure your ancestors had to have known him because there really wasn't much there and each family from what you read about it that came in mm -hmm. really forged the area for the future you know people to come in yeah um, one of one of the neighbors he was there for a full year before he sent for his wife and children you know to yeah make sure he got <laughs> okay. everything cleared and got a house set up and i'm not sure why it took a year but but he eventually sent for him i love it now, this would be our um, brick wall chart that we use, and mm -hmm. that's primarily used by me and the captain to keep track of, um, you know, where the available bounty points are. So we can see, everybody can see, we already know that yours, a lot of them are really close in. Everywhere the yellow spots are, where a possible brick wall ancestor, you had some just really cement walls there. <laughs> and, you know, once again, you I knew got that, this gray hair for a reason. You know that, you, right? I know. From doing this, Shelly, you got it from doing this. <laughs> And then on the, you know, pop out on the upper right, you kind of see where, and it looks like we had our color crowns out playing and, you know, <laughs> on this chart, but yeah, where we were trying to mark locations and mark, you know, where there might be some pedigree collapse and mark mm -hmm. where the corrections and the brick walls were. And yeah, it, it was a lot to keep track of. And, you know, we really hope to have pushed some more of those walls out, but boy, they're in there strong. And so this is now what your wiki tree tree looks like. And, you know, the goal is supposed to be, this is supposed to be completely accurate now. So when you yeah. look at these profiles, uh, definitely if you find something that you don't think is right, you can either mm -hmm. fix it or you can contact one of us and we'll fix it. And, you yeah. know, we want this to be great, but this is how much your tree is expanded on wiki tree now. I love it. I'm so appreciative. I've never had anybody help me. You know what I mean? Per se, without hiring somebody because, you know, because of having to work and do genealogy for work. I just right. don't get to do this stuff as much as I'd like to or the intent when I retired. So this is fascinating. I love it. I love it. Well, anybody that does genealogy, it seems like you spend so much time doing everybody else's. Yeah. You know that when you finally get around to your own tree, you're like, yeah, I don't have, I don't, I don't have the energy for that right now. <laughs> I'll get, I'll get to that line. And that's eventually. what I do. I'll catch that later. Let me go finish this one first, you know, yeah. and stuff. But, oh, I appreciate it so much. The new ancestors are what's going to be exciting is to follow through, you know, looking at them. So. Yeah. Right. And yeah, and, and you're still going to have a lot to look at. And, you know, like Donna said, um, we try to leave our breadcrumbs, our research notes everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, we love the white space. We love the ability to do our logging right there. Sure. You know, what we've worked on, what we would, you know, track our progress on it. And so hopefully for the areas that we couldn't quite break it down, we gave you enough information that you'll be able to. Got it. Okay. And now I'm going to go into just a little bit about how we collaborate mm -hmm. during our week when we're doing this. 
<laughs> on the left hand side what you see is a spreadsheet this is what we hope all of our participants use um, you know when you wind up with 25 35 people working on a tree at any given time or a set of branches you're going to be tripping over each other if you don't have some sort of organization so yeah. this is where we post our profile that we're working on and that way other people can go oh she's already got that i'll move over to this one mm -hmm. you know or if they want to add kids they'll go hey i see you're working on that person do you mind if i add their son real quick i want to do his profile um you know kind of keeps us uh from losing work and from being frustrated now on the right is the g2g post each week we have one unique for the guest and you will get a link to this shelly <laughs> There are some people that do interesting finds here or say, hey, you know, I'm working on this line, but um, but mostly we use this for the brick walls. So yeah. when somebody finds a brick wall ancestor or they find a correction that's important, you know, that's where that goes. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is Discord. And that really is our... Um, our biggest one, because we have people from around the world with this being a global tree. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm -hmm. you get any time of the day or night, there is somebody in there talking and we can get translations. We can get somebody to do a transcription for us. Mm -hmm. um, some people are really excellent at looking at newspaper articles where, you know, others aren't. Um, I like to do a will abstract. <laughs> we have some great people that love to sit there and do a full transcription. <laughs> so, um, you know, and sometimes we just cheer each other on. It's all, it's all helpful. When you and, to just do it, you, you know what I mean? You just do it. Yep. So. And it's not all about the points, but the points do help us keep motivated yeah. and keep track of where we're at. So I'll tell you a little bit about how we do this. Now we have the big points, which are the bounty points. You get 10 points each for brick wall ancestor you find or an ancestor you disprove. Um, whether that's something we had on WikiTree or you had on your primary tree, if they disprove mm -hmm. it, they get the points for it. And then the individual points are for any nuclear relatives so siblings children those can mm -hmm. add up if you start running into the bigger families mm -hmm. and at the end of the week we look at those scores and we do our top five and our mvp and our mvp is actually a prior guest that yes. would be melanie mccomb <laughs> yay melanie she, she was working right there alongside the team um, like she has been recently and we had Ellen Smith, who did some amazing work, our anonymous Sharky, who stays up in the top five a lot. Mm -hmm. Of course, the captain, Donna Bowman, right. and then Kathy Nava, who's another regular. She's really gotten into this and really learned a lot this year. And then let's go ahead and take a look at this score sheet and see what else we have. Now, I have to tell you this. Well, I didn't you, beat David. You didn't beat David. I know. <laughs> I know. But I think the only reason, honestly, is because people spent so many more hours, like, yeah. in the books. You know what I mean? Like, their, yeah. their heads were just buried in the books um, trying to trying to find something. And sure. so you still had a lot of points, just not as many of the actual edits. So now total points, we had 214 total points. And of course you see Melanie had 43 of those. Right. Of the created ancestors, there were eight direct ancestors. Mm -hmm. Created relatives, 106. And That's there were, beautiful. yeah, and there were more than that, you know, because sure. we wind up going off into the in-laws yeah. and, and their kids and, you yeah. know, just hoping to, to lead to a record that will help us. And then our mm -hmm. bounty points were 100 points. So that was really good. So that's 10 yeah. ancestor changes. And awesome. you, unique profiles edited. You still have some big numbers here, 572 profiles edited and mm -hmm. then for the total edit so every time somebody went in made a contribution they added a source fixed a date worked on the mm -hmm. biography mm -hmm. um 1735 so that's still a lot in a one week period that's awesome though i'm not ashamed i love it <laughs> <laughs> i'm not ashamed at all absolutely love it and thank oh. you guys it's beautiful yeah, I can't we hope wait we to it, get in there. We hope we at least met your expectations. Oh, absolutely. For... Absolutely. This is the best thing since sliced bread, you guys. 
that you know and and you guys are all researchers but to have somebody come help look at that you know that's amazing i appreciate it so much and thank you really feel honored too to be able to go in there and know that at least the edits <laughs> you know some proper edit because remember i said apa is my thing you know yeah. when i can put it in there <laughs> you know so but no i love it it's absolutely amazing look out roberta <laughs> <laughs> yep and she is next up yes thank you you know shelly um it's really interesting because your ancestors and my ancestors were in the same place at the same time. We're probably connected I, there. I'm like, I'm like Hagerstown, Hart. I'm like looking at all these deer. I'm like looking at all these names <laughs> going. I was just waiting, going. I'm like just waiting for the yeah. right one to pop up. And I didn't see it, but I'm like, oh, yeah. And it was um, interesting that Melanie's number one, because that's isn't she at the New England you know, yes. all those wardens and all those boyers, that's all <laughs> New York, New York, New York, Massachusetts, you know, Rhode Island are the Marshall, well, somewhat, but got Rhode Island, Connecticut, the wardens, my direct line started in um, Stonington, uh, New London, Connecticut and stuff. And so, yeah, she, she would have caught right in on that. <laughs> you know, and stuff. So, cause I joined the organization to be able to tap in because there was so much New England base, you know, and not as much Southern up there, but there was more New England. And I thought, okay, yeah, I could see her being number one on that. Cause that was right in her backyard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I was waiting for somebody in the audience to jump on this without me asking, you know, because we can actually tell right now if the branches have spread enough for you guys to be connected. I know that, um, Shelly, you and I are 17th cousins, so right, we're right. really distant cousins, but we're out there. So come on, somebody jump on it and let's see well, how Roberta Myrtle and Shelly. Pat. <laughs> Pat's a distant cousin. Cousin Russ and I are actually cousins, so yeah. The, the Wardens and, and the Worthingtons are in Lancashire back in the 15, 1600s getting married, you know, and stuff. So we've been toggling along and the uh, Henrys and the Boyers, you know, yeah, we're probably connected, you know, and the populations are small in these areas back during this time. So there's not much choice, you know that you're going to connect. So, but I just think it's awesome. You know what we all do. And again, uh, be interesting to see what Bob Simon says, because he's the one that really started me, you know, because this was my go-to resource for the warden line was wiki tree. And uh, cause he had put it up. And so I started following him. So, but anyway, so thankful. So your turn, Roberta, it's going to be up to you now your turn. <laughs> yes, for, I love for, it. For anybody that doesn't know, Roberta yeah. Estes has been fascinated with genealogy since 1978. She's been a professional scientist and business owner for more than 25 years. She's definitely a pioneer in the field of genetic genealogy. She formed the Estes Surname Project in 2002. She writes personalized DNA reports for Family Tree DNA administers or co-administers 46 different genealogy projects. And, you know, I have here at the end, Roberta, is a quilter and gardener in her free time, but I don't think you have any, do you? <laughs> Not a lot. Because it doesn't sound like it. Not a lot. Not a lot. But, uh, you know, I do love them. I, uh, uh, I'm trying to give up the gardening so I can do more quilting, <laughs> but I'm never giving up the genealogy. <laughs> right. Priorities. Priorities yeah. here. Now, what initially got you interested in genealogy? Well, that's really interesting because uh, you remember back in the day when you could fire a woman for being pregnant? Well, yeah, yeah. Shelly's like, yeah. I'm um, old enough to know about that. Well, I got I was pregnant for my daughter and I got fired. They said, oh, you know, you're, you're going to need this time to take care of. You're going to have two children now. And I'm like, great. So I didn't have a job. And I was, and I, you know, you can only clean house so much. And 
I'm like, oh, I want to find out something about my father's family because he died when I was seven. And I knew my mom's side, but he was from Tennessee. We grew up, I grew up in Indiana. So I decided, I, and I called the operator, like the O, you know, on the rotary phone, <laughs> that, that operator. <laughs> and, and I said, you know, give me any Estes in Tazewell, Tennessee. And she says, well, honey, you have to tell me which Estes you want. And I said, well, which Estes can I pick from? <laughs> so she read me so like four or five names. And there was a man who's like, whose name was William, which was my father and my grandfather's name. I said, give me that one. <laughs> so I didn't know I was starting genealogy. I just wanted to find out a little something about my father's side of the family. And I called him and he told me to call somebody else who told me to call somebody else. And <laughs> a, a few weeks later, somebody said, oh, so you're a genealogist. I said, oh, heavens, no, I just... No, I'm not a genealogist. I just want to find out something about my family. <laughs> Those are famous last words. Yeah. <laughs> what an awesome way to be introduced to it, though. I know. So I always know how many years I've been doing genealogy because I know how old my daughter is. Right. Now, if you had to pick one, who would you say is your favorite ancestor? You know, I was hoping you weren't going to ask me that question because I have so many. So I'm going to give you kind of like the cheap shot. Um, I, you know, I write on my blog, I write the 52 ancestor series. So I kind of, I try mm. to take one a week, although I can't always get it done because you know, that quilting and gardening and working interfere sometimes. Um, but it's kind of whichever ancestor I'm actually compiling information on. And what I do when I do that is like, I, I use WikiTree, but I use everything in my files. I get everything I have out and read it again because there's so much that there that I didn't catch the first time, you know. Um, but I do have a little short list of my favorite ancestors. And um, one of them is James Lee Claxton because he died in the War of 1812. And he he's a mystery. His father, I've been trying to find for decades who his father, I can tell you a whole long list of who he's not, but I can't tell you who he is. I can mm. tell you where he came from. I can tell you, I think they're related to the Hatcher family. And I think that's where my native segment comes from, but I can't tell you for sure. That's where they're from, down in Birdie County. Um, my Campbell line are is driving me insane. They were just naughty boys. Uh, God, you know, I think that's where I got it from. Um, uh, I'm not well behaved very often. I'm always doing something I probably shouldn't. And so by Campbell, um, so they're kind of favorite. I have a whole lot of strong women on my mother's side. You know, women who did what wasn't supposed to be able to be done because they had to do it. And uh, God, I just love those women. And the more I find out about them, the more I love them, you know, and I just, mm -hmm. so, and then there's my ancestor who was who got shipwrecked and you know we all have this the you know the three brothers and the shipwreck well he really did i didn't believe it he really did get shipwrecked on the way to america the mast broke in the ship they got they were half the people died they were adrift and they shipwrecked into norway and my friend found them in a record in bergen and i'm like no that can't be him he said it's him i promise you and i went there three years ago and i stood where they brought him ashore and I was wow. in the church where they buried the baby the grandson that was born and died I mean it was a, almost a religious experience truly mm -hmm. and it wasn't just him that was there it was his daughter who is also my ancestor and her parents mm -hmm. who and, and they left there and we can't find the parents after that so we don't know they were older um, and they on the way to America the second time they had another hurricane. And so, wow. so I know it's like, I can't believe they survived that. So, you know, my favorite ancestors, probably whoever I'm working on at the time, because I find out such mm -hmm. amazing things about these people and their strength and their resilience and the history surrounding them and the time in which they lived um, and the challenges they faced. And I just love that to learn those things about those people, you know, and I, and I, um, I'm mixed race as well. So I have all, you know, I'm uh, African American, Native American, and uh, European, and lots of different countries in Europe. And 
the mm -hmm. cultures and the clashes of the cultures and the plagues and the, I just, it's all just fascinating to me. And then I like to use my DNA to track back to the ancestors, you know, to try and find them because some of them I can't find any other way. That's, I, I talked way more than the question you ask. <laughs> That's okay. I love and, yeah, it. The, you know, the tools we have nowadays on hand are incredible, but you have to use them. I mean, mm -hmm. you have to utilize what you have. So do you have any other interesting um, stories that you have found out <laughs> on your journey? Well, you know, um, some of the most interesting stories are, I mean, you know, you know, you don't know the ones far back. Those are the ones you know, you don't know. So you expect to find things there. But I found things about my father, my grandfather, my great grandfather. I'm like, who oh boy, you know, um, my great grandfather married my great grandmother and she was pregnant. Um, and he was a well, um, extremely handsome well driller. Um, and then I found out when I went to Pennsylvania where he was born that he had a wife and four children that he didn't divorce until after he married, yeah. Yeah, that's probably where we're related. At. <laughs> I saw that, Donna. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, oh, my, you know, that was. And then after they he married her in Aurora, Indiana, and they moved uh, away. And then I kept finding him in the paper and he was involved with horse racing and he was involved. I mean, if you can, you know, it was like. He, he was just a naughty boy, you know, he was so interesting though. And his wife, you know, then he dies, he gets um, t tuberculosis and he dies. And then she, op she starts, she opens a millinery thing and starts making quilts. That's where my quilt making comes from. And then she married some guy like three years later who got divorced the day before. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, <laughs> it was just that yeah it's and who amazing. are these people i thought i knew <laughs> i know i'm like you know my aunt eloise was her daughter i'm like nobody told me about that you know <laughs> i mean i knew it eloise to, and I, she didn't die i was an adult i'm like she meant she didn't mention those things you know nobody mentioned those things so. all right yeah so, i'm yeah, still finding so that, those stories in my family <laughs> yeah I found some old letters and I, the way I found my brother, I'm reading a letter from my aunt to my stepmother. Both of them were deceased by the time I read this letter. My stepmother's daughter sent me a package of letters that had been my stepmother's. And there's a letter that, my, uh, that had some from my dad and some, uh, some other people that involved my side of the family. So I'm reading this letter. And my aunt talks about the boy that was born in 1955 and I'm like maybe she thought Roberta was Robert you know so I asked my mother and my mother got she got angry at me I'm like well that's an odd thing in my mind I'm not discussing that I'm like okay there's something here you know I'm a genealogist that was like throwing gasoline on the fire <laughs> yeah sure enough my dad that he, I have a brother who was born in, in, in um, well, four months before me mm. and half brother. And so I found him, I found him and several years ago and he took a DNA test and, you know, we were both ecstatic. He didn't have any living family. Um, all I, ha I had my mom left at that time, but um, really not very many other people. And then we took a D we took a sibling test before autosomal DNA, and it came back really strange. And they're like, uh, "We think you're cousins." I'm like, "No, no, it's either yeah. half siblings or neither one. You know, you yeah. don't get cousin. It's one or the other. It's not cousin." Right. So I'm like, "Okay." So then he took a Y DNA test, and he didn't match my estes line but that could have been because my father or my grandfather because we didn't have that many people then i'm like okay i still can't well then autosomal testing and he took an autosomal test and we didn't match yeah so my 
father thought he was. So my father was cheating on my mother, but the girlfriend was cheating on my father. <laughs> I got a soap opera going on. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> but I have to tell you, I love that brother to death. Oh, yeah. We were very close right up until he passed away. And I'm so grateful that I found him. Um, um, so you can't, does Roberta know why Samuel has a surname Clarkson and his dad and siblings are Claxton? Yes, I know why. Uh, <laughs> because that's how they say it in, in Hancock County. That's how they Tennessee. say it in Hancock, what, Tennessee? <laughs> Sneedville. Yeah, that's how they say it. Yeah, so it's, it's Clarkson. Um, but then here's the thing. There's another line that's actually Claxton out of... Um, North Carolina that we match the Y DNA and I also match on autosomal. And that's the one where he's married to, he, he handles the estate of a Hatcher man whose wife was Native American. I think he was the son-in-law, but I can't prove it. And I've gone through I so many records, but that's my mystery line, James Claxton. That's one of my mystery lines. He's found in Russell County, Virginia in 1799 when he marries, just before he marries Sarah Cook. Um, and we know who he's related to because of DNA, but I can't, we can't find the common ancestor mm. and we don't think it's the James in North Carolina, even though it's the same name, because he supposedly had a son, James, who went to that other County in Tennessee that I match all those people in. So mm. it's, you know, I'm, I'm telling you, I come from this long line. I do have a few ministers, but <laughs> <laughs> but now the rest of them. <laughs> That's right. Well, I have an immaculate conception, and they started off with it because I believe William Michael Murphy is is my yeah. immaculate conception guy. I'm with you. I'm with yeah, you. I, got I think they're things. all hanging out in the same place and they're drinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, my it's really funny because I have you know my Acadian line. I got all these Catholic people. And then I have a brother in line out of Hagerstown. And so I got all these pietist people. And then out of Tennessee, you know, my William Moore was a Baptist minister back when they, you know, weren't allowed. The Episcopals ran Virginia. And so he was a dissenting minister. So he got in a lot, and the Rices, they got in a lot of trouble. And the Moors married the Rices because of their religion. <laughs> so I got all these people. Uh, and very some very religious, so I'm sure they've rotated in their graves a few times now, looking at their descendants. <laughs> I know my Quakers are. <laughs> I got Quakers too. I'm yes. in Frederick County, Virginia. Yeah, that's yeah. where mine are at. Seriously, the Bordens. Okay, is that it? <laughs> it's the same area. It's the same. People. Winchester area and the Hopewell Meeting House is right it's, there. It's the same house. So I've got Edward Mercer and I've got the Cremleys and they're in the same meeting house in Hopewell. Oh, wow. Oh, well, you God. know what? That's interesting because Deborah Borden is my fifth great grandmother. She married a Henry. Their <laughs> son, William, is the one that um, had two children with one of their slaves. Now, you got the Quaker family on the mama's side and you got the Henrys. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, I was trying to understand that. And then the Hopewell house and the whole thing, you know, and yeah. I'm thinking, okay, we got the Bordens hanging out here, but we got little Mr. Henry over here and he leaves after the revolutionary war and goes to Cock County, Tennessee. No, he goes to Greenville, Tennessee after the revolutionary war, the and one Green, side. And that's where Green County is, right? Greenville. Yep. That, so that's that's Nellie McCorkle's the, area. That's where the Crumleys and the Babs went. There you go. We're finding that 14th. What was that, Donna? You said we were connected, what, 14th cousins 14th or something? Cousins. We're going to make that closer by the time knows. we get these branches. Our, our family line, her and mine, are they're just like in lockstep like this together. Yeah. And yeah. The intersect. And see, I've got brick walls back in there. So there's are some of my brick walls. Like we don't know who Henry Mercer's wife was. We don't know who William Crumley's wife was. We, yeah. you know, we don't know those things. You know that uh, that's some of my big brick walls is some of those lines. That I'm just stuck. And I even have I've got mitochondrial DNA on some of them, and I know who we match, but I can't separate it out mm -hmm. to another family. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, I'm still stuck back there, but 
You know, it's, it's interesting because some of the, sometimes when you accidentally, you find somebody and then I'm going to go, when we get down here, we got to figure out if they match. We, we have to look at our matches and see. If well, apparently Donna looked at something already. We need our DNA. We're going to we have to look need, at I, My DNA is up on, on WikiTree. Okay. And, so and I'm in dead match. Yeah. Okay. I'm in, put it this way, living DNA, my heritage, 23 and <laughs> me, and She's ancestry. Yeah, 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 and I, I did one of those, uh, what was it called? What was one of the first ones about 2005? Um, I can't even think of the name of it. It wasn't, and I got family tree DNA also. So I got a brother with the Y and my mama with the M, you, you know, mitochondria. Mm -hmm. But wait, what was that first test I took? And I can't even think of the name of it now. Um, it's not Sorensen. It was an, uh, a National Genographic. Oh, Geographic Project, yeah. Geographic yeah, Project. and of course yeah. that's gone now or they got taken over or whatever it was. That was way back, I think 2004 or five or something like that. That was yeah. my first DNA test. Didn't even understand DNA, but took the test. <laughs> yeah. Well, when we're done here, we have to go check and see because I'll, I'll, I'll check your number and see if um, you match me or any of my cousins because even okay. if you don't match me, if you match my cousins or I match your cousins. And I've got moms too. Yeah. 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 So that's interesting. And we could match on either side because the one group I, we've been talking about is my mom's side and the other group's my dad's side. We could match on either side or both. Um, all of the Bordens and all of them are dad's side and the Henry's is dad's side because I'm trying to um, connect that Henry to Patrick Henry mm -hmm. because the DNA is taking me to Aberdeenshire, Scotland. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly where that Henry family comes from and my Henry family. And it's like, well, how many Henry's in one community are we going to have? Well, we know that answer, but still it's going to be worth just checking because it's like, oh, don't know about your descendants, do you, Mr. Patrick Henry? <laughs> you know that stuff. And so, but I was tracking back and I got the Aberdeen Shire, but there were several Johns and, and the birth years were, you know, two or three years. I could do a couple years, but I think the furthest was five years. So I backed off. I said, ah, they're probably not connecting, but they could because we're talking about the 1600s and how big could Aberdeenshire be in the 1600s? You mm -hmm. know, yeah. I think it's all the same family. So we'll see. We'll see. I'll call your cousin anyway and be done with it. We don't even have to do the research. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got to do the research because we could break down each other's brick wall. Yeah, you're really you know? good. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the McCorkles, actually, they just took that name. And so I don't even know what it is, but that John McCorkle, and again, his parents probably don't have that name, but um, mm -hmm. they actually root back to Virginia. And mm -hmm. so his parents, and he's, of course, born in Greene County, Tennessee. So... We'll see. I'm excited. I am too. <laughs> hey, if we can break down that brick wall. <laughs> oh my gosh. And you okay, know what? Now the, the hardest thing is going to be though, Roberta, is you know, you can't touch your tree on either side. Oh my side God. That was the worst you. thing. That was the <laughs> absolute worst. Oh my I God. Wait. You guys I, are going to want to go look at all that overlap. Oh my I God. Just, you couldn't I want, touch it. I just need her Jed match number so you can message me, Shelly. It's, yeah. it's um, right on WikiTree. I know, but if I can't look, that's what there's. I can't look, right? For oh, you can look, you can look at Shelly's profile. You can't look at your own tree. So. You can go look at mine, but don't look at yours. Okay. All right. And I can give you the number. We're public, right? Well, yeah, right. but just. If you don't want to do that, you can message me. We'll, we'll, we'll be good. We'll, 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 we'll take care of it. We'll get it yeah. fixed up. Yeah, because I got to know if we're related. I mean, I can't <laughs> wait on that. It's in the chat. I mean, oh, all right. <laughs> of course I know that number. <laughs> and my mother's, my, my mother's, um, my mother's, my, you know, would be a generation closer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But wait, Absolutely. she's not Tennessee. She's the Virginia and all New England. Well, that's all right. I'll check that too because I got a bunch of New England up in Connecticut. <laughs> Stony, New, New London, Connecticut. 
1728, fifth great grandfather's born. And, now, and I, yeah. I'm like, I kept hearing them talk about you. I'm like, I haven't heard the right name yet, but I hear all the names that are around mine. Yeah. 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 But to Melanie say, Melanie, find right, yourself right. a project. I, I like have we don't to, have enough to do. <laughs> I, I'm trying to pack the move in, in addition yeah. to everything else. So, yeah, I got a big project. Oh. Okay, let's I have try a full time job in here. <laughs> yeah, I have I a full time job researching. You yeah. know, I'm trying to squeeze in my stuff in between that job, you know, and stuff. So, and the ancestors don't let you rest, they really don't. You know, you get a clue or a link or something, you, you have to work it, you know, so <laughs> makes it rough. So I don't know if you all can see what Chris's message to me or not. I, I don't know if that's public, but he asked that I did. I did a blog about the Estee family in Ferrara and he asked what brought me there. And the Estes family out of Kent, England. Well, we know they're out of Kent, England now, but that's where the lawyers are from. Oh, God. <laughs> So all those years ago, though, back in the day before I started, um, people said, oh, Estes and Este." So there was this oral, this myth that the Estes family was descended from the house of Este. And of course, there had, the myth was there had been this son that got kicked out of the family and went to Belgium. And if you did any, if you did any of the research, you could poke like a hundred holes in this because it's like, okay, there was a son that did, you know, leave for Belgium, but he couldn't have been the father because the, the years are so, it's not possible, you know? And then it was like, and then he went to England. Okay, he's royalty. And in England, they're mariners. They're poor mariners. They're fishmongers. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I just, so I, I, that story would not die. So when the Y DNA came along, I took, you know, the Y DNA points very clearly to not Italy. And the, what I wound up doing was I used the Y DNA and I compiled all those oral history stories. And then I did the actual research and I poked 173 holes in the, you know, in that balloon trying to get it to die. <laughs> and so, that was my point of writing that that article because I don't want bad information to be out there. Right. You know, I do not want it no. out there. And so I document what I find. And, you know, there is actually one descendant alive of that DSA family by a different surname today that's actually in that blog article. Um, and if that fam fam royal family would ever decide to test, uh, y DNA test, then we could actually find out, but I'm sure they're not going to. But I have, I am, I'd be dumbstruck if that was true. It would have to violate so many laws of physics. You know, it was just an interesting story. You know, Este, Estes, yeah, sure, it's the same. We've got them in Virginia, in Central Virginia, too. At Estes, there's oh, not God, yes. relatives, but you know, that's come up in the um, Albemarle County is where it's at. The, the Estes, my Abraham Estes, the immigrant, um, settled in, in King and Queen and had 12 sons. And they were very prolific. And there's Estes everywhere. People yeah. ask me, they're like, are you related to so-and-so? I'm like, probably. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's Borden's, not Boyer. The Kent yeah. England, it's the Borden's that, you know. Yeah. This board, yeah. that whole line, yeah, they came the Kent England in into the British America per se, yeah. United States. Yeah. yeah, my boyers were somewhere else. Uh, they were England, England. So, and where is your African side coming from? Do you know? Yeah, my Estes line out of Halifax County, Virginia. Um, oh, that's and, a P line from Albemarle to Halifax, right? Yeah. There. A lot of migration. We have a lot of, um, I, I don't know exactly where in that line, because yeah. we have Combs, who was a slave owner. We have the younger family, who we don't know who his father was. We have, uh, he freed his slaves. 
-hmm. and he called him his family. So, I mean, literally he wrote that my family, you Mm -hmm. know, so, uh, and they wouldn't let him leave in his will. They wouldn't let him by law. He couldn't leave the money. So he talked, he told his white family that they had to take care of his black family. So, I mean, so it is very, so, but then Mary Younger married George Estes and the hero. So somewhere up in there, it's in that DNA somewhere, but because we don't know who Marcus's father was. We don't know who, I mean, we just kind of got a mess up in there. And then I also have another line and it's, it's uh, I'm not black from that line, but my ancestor had a black wife and a white wife. And he had, he built them both homes and he, he was known for having fights with both of them. And he, <laughs> he, he, he and they, they live there. I, I mean, love they, the story. Oh, I know. And so what he'd do is he'd, he'd, go, he'd move over with, you know, with Harriet and she'd get pregnant and then she'd get mad at him and throw him out and he'd go back over to Mary and then she'd be pregnant and then she'd be mad at him and she'd throw him out and he'd go back over to Harriet and they lived on the opposite side of his land and Har- Harriet died and Mary took his children. Harriet was the black wife and Mary was the white wife. Harriet died and then he died. And Mary took Harriet's children and raised them as her home, as her own. Yeah, with they're her all own family. family. Yeah. They're all family. And so we knew we didn't know who was mixed and who wasn't. We couldn't. We right. we didn't know. Yeah. So my cousins found me years and years ago now, and we did a thing up in Cumberland Gap. This was in Hancock County, Tennessee, but it was Claiborne at the time. So we did a big reveal at Cumberland Cumberland Gap. So we got all the pictures together and we did the DNA test. And the first day of this conference, my, my, my cousins who are African, they identify as African-American and they all came and I came and then we all stood up and we showed everybody the pictures and we told them the evidence and then we made them guess. And then we told them the next day we would reveal the truth. Right. We we weren't going to tell them that day. So the next day that was at the Holiday Inn in Middlesbrough and the next day, the place was swarmed. The fire marshal came because we had too many people. They, <laughs> the mayor was there. The press was there. <laughs> Were you at the rodeo? <laughs> oh my god! I, I I walked down there and I'm I'm like, what is going on? And they're like. Uh, everybody came to hear your reveal. I'm Real. like, why are all these people hitting this? Stuff? They're all related. I'm like, what? So the fire marshal says, you can't do this. And I'm like, but what am I going to do? I, 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 you know, they said, we have a solution. So the National Park has a big auditorium up at the National Park Center there at Cumberland Gap. And they said, well, we called up to the National Park and they have enough room for you. So you're just going to everybody go up to the national park and you're going to do this there. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so we did. Oh gosh. That's awesome. It was, it was. And I just, I love my cousins, you know, I'm so grateful to find them. And yeah. And, uh, so yeah, that was our big reveal. And yes, we are cousins. And, yeah. I have a Estes lady I've been working with over the years in Albemarle County, and she mm-hmm. her line goes right to King and Queen. So I'm going to make sure I put you two together. She's yep. African American. Yep, and she goes so much- right to the Estes line and goes right to King and Queen. Um, you know Franklin Smith? He was the African American genealogist at the Clayton uh, Library. He just retired. I've heard um, that name, yeah. Well, he's my cousin too, through the Dodson line okay. out, of, out of Virginia there. So uh, we share ancestors there too. Awesome. So. Sorry, Mindy, we just okay. I, know. I was going to say, I'm sorry. I, think, I think we'll wind this down now <laughs> and, and you guys can email all your contacts yeah. to each other. Roberta just can't look at her trees and change anything. I want um, I, I want to 
I want to thank everybody that worked so hard on Shelly's tree this week. Uh, you guys always amaze me. You do such a great job. Just really wonderful, wonderful work. And, you know, thank you, Shelly and Roberta both for joining us and for allowing us to play in your branches. And for anybody else out there watching. There's more to come. Yeah. You can come back next week and we'll tell you what they found. I mean, what we found also for Roberta's branches, any big discoveries that we have. And if you want to find out more, you can check us out at wikitree.com. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to get alerts to the broadcasts. Good night. Thank you.